Flawcast episode 179, To Circumcise or Not to Circumcise. The followers of Jesus, for his sake, renounce every personal right. If after giving up everything else for his sake, they still wanted to cling to their own rights, they would then have ceased to follow him. Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Flawcast. Get in the arena. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All of our esteemed Fallout Cast listeners want to welcome and thank everybody back to a, another fun filled, hopefully convicting episode of Flawcast. Riding solo this week. Uh, this is the week after Thanksgiving, and I hope you all had a great holiday with friends and family. And uh, just going to get into this episode. Uh, I know it has a unique title but i'm gonna i think it all i'll explain as it goes on so anyway we just want to do the quick shake and howdy and welcome everybody and ask everyone to share um we are found anywhere podcasts are uh just look up flawcast cle we're on apple google play breaker spotify anywhere podcasts are we're also on the Video platform Rumble, that's under Flawed Inc. as well. You can find us on the Project Mockingbird social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Getter, and Gab, all under Flawed Inc. In the description of this episode and every episode, there is a link to get a copy of my book, Smith's Heart of Man Repair Manual. It is a great, great piece of literature, of encouragement, of spiritual nourishment to give to the men in your life, uh, and also women. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of women tell me that they got a lot out of it also. So um, please check that out, and that all goes to help funding the next project, which I am um, at least <laughs> thigh deep in at this point. So um, our email is flawed, Inc. CLE at gmail.com. Yeah, send us any questions, comments, or concerns. And also, if you'd like a copy of my book and um, purse strings are getting tight, no shame, uh, no shade being thrown, send me an email there. I'd be more than happy to send you a PDF on the house. But nonetheless, we're going to get into this episode uh, to circumcise or not to circumcise. And this was actually inspired uh, by my uh, wife. She teaches a Bible study. Uh, we're currently going through the book of Acts, and we came upon this scripture in Acts, and uh, I really felt like God spoke to me it, uh, about the genesis of this episode. So uh, thank you, my lovely wife, for um, unknowingly inspiring me, which she normally does on a regular basis anyway. So uh, we're going to go Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. This is from the Amplified. It says, Now Paul traveled to Derby and also to Lystra. A disciple named Timothy was there, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer in Christ. However, his father was a Greek. Timothy was well spoke of by the brothers and sisters who were in Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to go with him as a missionary, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, since they all knew that his father was a Greek. So let me um, kind of unpack this. This is a very obscure thing, but this is really what God spoke to me. And, and as most things with these episodes go, I'm kind of like the mad scientist who uh, just, you know, twiddles around and, and tries to discover something that works and uh, try to, you know, experiment on me first. So Paul wanted Timothy to go with him on his missionary trips, but he knew the religious ideology of the Jews and then the believing Jews was that you had to be circumcised according to the Jewish custom to be considered saved at that time. Um, now, uh, you read in Acts chapter 15 that, uh, you know, Peter and uh, you know the other apostles at the time kind of dispensed with that. Uh, but the knowledge didn't travel like it then like it does now. It's not like you can send out a tweet uh, or a text and, oh, okay, here's the, here's the amendment to that. So knowing the customs, knowing the traditions, and knowing that Timothy, a young man who Paul wrote first in 2 Timothy 2, uh, this is the same Timothy we're talking about, wanted him to go, knew it was his responsibility to train him up and to teach him the ways of the Lord in the ministry, in order to do that, had to circumcise him. Um, and circumcision, for those who don't know, is where uh, the foreskin of the penis is cut off. And to Jews, that was, or that is, uh, a symbol of 
a covenant with God. And you can read that there's long standing traditions, uh, you know, Moses, the children of Israel, uh, circumcised and uh, uh, just all throughout the Old Testament. That's such a, a predominant covenant that you take uh, with God in that time. And, and knowing that Timothy was called and that God predestined him for a ministry, Paul wanted to equip him. And equipping him wasn't just taking him in the field and teaching him hands-on experience in ministry, but it was also physically, spiritually, uh, mentally preparing him. And he knew that uh, Timothy, who you normally uh, on the eighth day a child is uh, born, that's when they do this because it's such a, a horrendous, painful thing. And I'm sure if there's any guys who are listening to this right now, you're probably cringing, just the thought. But uh, Timothy was <laughs> a young man, but still understanding the pain that that had to be in order to fulfill the destiny and call in God's life. And what I really felt like God speak to me in this was that in order to follow him, we are going to have to sacrifice things. We're going to have to remove things and we're going to be called to lose things and in, in so oftentimes in a painful way that we can follow him that we can fulfill the call and destiny of our life and and in that we distinguish ourselves going through this process and it may not be physical circumcision the scriptures the uh, the, the new testament specifically talk about the circumcision of the heart but this was an outward manifestation of an inward process that as New Testament believers, we need to uh, daily uh, go through. But the idea of sacrificing, of, of giving up things, of enduring things so that we can be a disciple, that we can be a follower of Christ is so important. And, and, and we don't really see a lot of priority in, in that right now in the world of Christianity. We just simply don't. I'm going to talk to you about, uh, I have a lot of verses here I want to go over regarding this idea. And uh, I hope you'll pay attention because I believe this is something like with the idea of suffering that God's really introduced in my life. There's this removal of unnecessary things that we need to go through in order to follow Christ more closely. And I, I believe in my heart, I'm going through things like that. And I want to encourage you that you're going through things like that to give into it. Um, easier said than done, uh, but to you know, give into that, give God the, the credit, if you will, give God the open door to move in your life. But this is Luke chapter 14, verses 26 to 33. Uh, from the Amplified, it says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, in the sense of indifference to or relative disregard for them in comparison with his attitude towards God, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow after me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living and need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me, cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a watchtower for his guards, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to finish it? Otherwise, he has had a foundation laid and is unable to begin to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the one who is coming against him with 20,000? Or else, if he feels he is not powerful enough, while the other king is still a far distance away, he sends a convoy and asks for terms of peace. So then, none of you can be my disciple who does not carefully consider the cost and then, for my sake, give up all his own possessions. So, this is such an important thing, and I honestly don't hear this taught a lot. In order to follow Christ, we need to give up our desires that are contrary to his desires or that we find in the scriptures that we find in the gospel. Anything that is not of that, the lust, the flesh, the eyes and the pride of life, if you will, 
that needs to be circumcised from our hearts and from our lives. And that is a painful process like circumcision is. Uh, our flesh is strong, but, you know, in just a kind of a side note here, when he says you have to hate your your mom and your dad, your spouse, your you know, your family, even your own self, what he is saying is not hate them. He's saying that they have to understand Christ predominantly is the head that comes before all of those things, even in our own life, that we prefer Christ and his lordship in our life to what we want, what we prefer. And the Christian life is not an easy life. By no means does anyone who accurately teaches the gospel tell people that, yeah, uh, you know, you're going to have your best life now and you're going to be rich and everything's going to be easy street and life's going to be a piece of cake. That's not the truth. That just isn't simply isn't the gospel. Um, I'm going to go here to Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Once again, from the Amplified, it says, Then Jesus said to his own disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple... He must deny himself, set aside selfish interest, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering, or perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake, will find it that is my life with me for all eternity and I think this just re-emphasizes the fact that we have to lose our life we have to not take our life not in a suicidal matter of fact but we have to lose the love of these things I call them lesser lovers in our life in our heart that keeps us at length from Christ that keeps us at a distance from being close to him. We have to, once again, we have to circumcise these things from our heart in our life in order to follow him, in order to allow our destiny and our calling to become manifest. Uh, one more verse here. This is John 14, verse 15 from, once again, from the Amplified. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. And this is a rather exhaustive topic. I'm certainly not doing anything but scratching the surface on this. And this is not going to be a very long episode. So I, I hope that I can really deliver a, a very succinct, powerful point in a short amount of time. But the ultimate point here is much as Paul and Timothy instructed and then did in his life, Paul circumcised Timothy at a he was older than eight days old, so that he could move forward with the calling and destiny of his life, knowing that there were things that, because of custom, because of tradition, that were going to be a hindrance to him, Paul took it and took Timothy and circumcised him. The metaphor, what I believe God was really speaking to my heart, is that there are things in our life that we need to circumcise. We need to have a circumcision of our heart. We need to have a circumcision of our will in lieu of what God is calling us towards and what he's calling us for. And I believe right now, uh, and one of my, some of my favorite verses are Matthew 9, 37 and 38. It says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Do not pray to the Lord for the harvest, but pray the Lord will send workers into the harvest field. And I just have this gnawing suspicion that the hour is growing late and late. And I know that right now it's the holiday season and everyone's thinking about getting people prizes and uh, going to parties and doing this. And, and that's great. And, and I want to even say that, you know, whatever we have an interest in, those are things that God gives us. I have an interest in music and history, but there's a lot of people that have an interest in sports and, um, you know, things of that nature. You know, there, there's all different things. God has a, a multitude of uh, colors that he paints, his own, he paints on a multitude of canvases. That isn't what is we're talking about because God can use those gifts. God can use my, my gifts of learning how to record and edit audio for different things. That's just one example. Uh, he can use the gift of me enjoying history uh, and, and looking at the scriptures and, and, and talking with you guys like I do I try to do every week. 
So we don't have to not be who God created us to be, but if there is something in our life that is detracting us or separating us or alluring us from growing closer to Christ and growing growing closer in our calling, those are the things that need to be circumcised. And I, I, I share this example with people, and I'll, I'll give this example really quickly, that when I first became a Christian, I got rid of everything, uh, and I literally had two CDs, and then I rebuilt my collection, primarily with Christian music, because I thought, you know, for me at that time, I could only listen to Christian music, and I remember years ago, this is probably like easily 12, 13 years ago, being in Walmart, and Counting Crows came on the radio, and uh, Mr. Jones, and Counting Crows is one of my favorite groups. I, I actually, you know, I'm friends with Adam, the lead singer, and I've, I've seen them seven, eight times, have all of their uh, recordings, you know, so on and so forth. But I remember walking through the wall, uh, the halls of Walmart and just singing Mr. Jones, and I, like, stopped myself, like, oh, God, I repent. I'm so sorry. I, you know, that's, uh, I, I, you know, I shouldn't have done that, you know, and I really felt God speak to me and said, why are you repenting? And having this conversation with him at Walmart said, because this is not a Christian song. This is not something that I should be enjoying, and, and God really spoke to me and said, the music that you loved was in the place in your heart that I should have been. I am now in the proper place of your heart. And as long as I stay there, you can enjoy these things. They're not sinful. And it's just an example like that, that going back to my point, we have these different things that we're interested in that may not necessarily be sinful. God gives us things to enjoy, and we are allowed to do that. But if these things need to be removed from our heart, they need to be circumcised from our heart because they are separating us from God, because they are lesser lovers that are wooing us from the Almighty and from the purpose of our life, then we really need to have very serious uh, time in prayer that we can understand what those are and then ask God to help with the process of circumcision. So I, I just, I hope this speaks to people. I know in the hustle and bustle of the holidays, it's easy to, ah, I don't have time for that or, you know, this and that. But, you know, not to sound cliche, but Jesus is the reason for the season. And, and keep that in mind as you're going to and fro and even as you're shopping. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, jokingly, I said, uh, <laughs> my favorite Christmas song is Move. Um, by ludicrous, <laughs> you know, because you're in traffic, you're in lines, you just tell these people, move, get out the way. Um, and and that, joking aside, we just need to realize that the reason we're doing everything, the reason that we're arguing with our family, the reason that we're trying to come together is to celebrate the birth of Christ. And I, I hope that is just a preeminent thought in your mind, and, and that's a seed that's planted in your heart. So I'm just going to pray and then uh, close this out. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for sharing this with me, and I ask that you just continue to uh, purify my heart, that you continue to encourage me and, and convict me as I'm going through this process of circumcising these things that are in my life uh, that are not of you, that don't give you glory, that, that are keeping me from whatever purpose you have in, in my life. And I pray the same for the people that are listening, that you would speak to their heart, that you would convict them, that you would just show them places in their life that you don't want because they're a hindrance to the relationship they have with you. And I just ask that you would just speak to their heart and uh, speak to their mind, speak to them in a way that they will understand, that they will know for certain it is you calling and drawing them. And I just praise you and I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just want to, once again, thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, Carl will be back next week, I'm sure. Uh, I just wanted to come out real quick and just share this because this is really what God's been dealing with me and, and, and dropping in my heart. And I know I wanted to share because I, I believe people are probably struggling with that, especially in the time that we're in, um, and, and especially the generation of church going and, and church leadership that we have that really don't often teach and instruct these things. So uh, please share this episode. Once again, I do believe that these are messages that people need to know, that need to hear. Um, you can find us anywhere podcasts are. On, uh, just search Flawcast CLE or on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Breaker, Anchor.fm. Uh, you can find us on the 
video platform Rumble under Flaught Inc. Uh, we're on the Project Mockingbird social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're on Getter and Gab, all under Flaught Inc. Uh, there is a link in the description to get a copy of my book, Smith's Heart of Man Repair Manual. A great gift for this time of year for the men in your life. Um, and our email is flawedincle at gmail.com. Send us a message if you have any questions, comments, or concern. Or you can always hit us up on our social media. Uh, if you want to copy my book and purse strings are a little tight, send us an email. I'll be more than happy to send you a PDF on the house but uh, i love you guys and, and there is nothing in this world that is worth coming between you and jesus and the calling that he has for you